10.4 involves using the sample spaces and or the trees. And as I said, is this right here is going to uh, go away as just a method of doing things. You'll still be doing it in 10.4 anytime you do anything with 10.4. But what we'll find out is these things can get real big real quick. And it's not always feasible to do this. And we'll see that in the second hour, how we're going to handle that. So let's look at this one here. Number five. All right. So I want to make a little tree thing here. And so what I've got, three cho computers are choosing it, uh, chosen at random from an inventory of Dell and Acer computers for a bookstore display. So we're going to make a display. And uh, we got the choice of Dell or Acer. So I'm going to have an A here and a D for Dell. A for Acer, D for Dell. So here's our second computer. So this one right here is the first one. So the second one would be here. So this is gonna be Dell and Acer. Same thing here. All right, and then one more. So this is going to be the third one. All right, so I'm just going to keep the same order, Dell, Acer on top. Dell uh, on top, Acer. All right. So this is the third one. Now, each time I've got a computer here, for the first one, there's two. For the second one, there's two. And then for the third one, there's two. So there are how many outcomes? Eight outcomes. So this one right here would be Dell, 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 D, D, D. This one would be D, D, A. Here's Dad, Dell, Acer, Dell. And this is DAA. Now we're getting ADD. ADA. A A D and the last one is A A A for three acers in a row. All right.
All right. So you see that there's eight different outcomes, and that fits with the uh, counting principle concept of two times two times two. So this is being combined into three choices. So that's where the two times two times two comes from to give us eight different outcomes. Okay, now find the probability. We're looking for probability now that all three will be acers. So I'm going to put uh, just AAA because that's what that is. That's three acers. All right, there's eight outcomes. And how many of them with uh, three acers? That is the only one, correct? Yes. So the probability of all acers is one eighth. All right, so over here, we got to have two A's for this one. And I'll try to write it. We don't have to have the A's in any particular position, but we need A, A. It's actually Dell. It's, a, it's actually two uh, Dell, so. So we could have D, D, A, or D, A, D, or A, D, D. Either one of those is three, is two Dells. How many of those? Well, we got. DDA is right there. DAD is right there. That's two Dells. And then the other one is here. All the rest of them have just one D down here. And the one up at the top has three Ds. And then this one here has just one D. So that probability is three eights okay now we got to figure out what they mean here what does at least two mean in terms of all this at least two let's go through Is DDD at least two L, uh, acers? No. No, that's three Dells. So we're going to take that one out. How about this one here? D, Del, Del, Acer. Is that at least two uh, acers? Nope. Nope. And DAD, that's two Dells and one Acer. So we're not going to use that one. But what about that next one, D-A-A? -A? Yeah. Yeah, that's at least two acres right there because there are two of them. A-D-D -D is two Dells. That's only one acer. But the next one, we got to love that one because it's got two A's and this one has got two what about that third one? Is that one going to count? Yeah. Because that's at least two. It's three. But it's at least two. So now all of the ones there with the little heart gives us four over eight. And eight is the same denominator for all of these. So this probability is one half. 
So one half of the outcomes has at least two Acer computers in it. All right. Questions on that? I'll be glad to go back through anything on it. As I had said, on Thursday, you're going to have a little assignment where it's going to have some of these where you um, it would be helpful to draw out the tree or the sample space. I want to go over some more, so don't worry about it. I just want to know if there's any questions about this one. <coughs> and y'all got a sneak peek last time because I gave you that wrong one. So that's the one you're going to get, that one. Okay, so that one you should be able to do now. All right, let's see if we can find another problem. This one's got four, and that's going to be an awful big one. Let's see if I can find one that's a little bit better. Yeah, I don't think we did this one. This was a good one. All right, so it says Mark and Raul play three games of pool. They're equal in ability, so <clears throat> in other words, it's kind of, you know, 50% chance of winning for each one, like a coin flip. Draw, draw a tree, tree diagram to uh, determine the same space and find the probability of each of these four things. So let's go ahead <clears throat> and see if we can do that. So this is game one. Game one. Tell you what, I'm gonna see if I can type this out. For some reason, my okay. So there's game one, and we can have both. Uh, and this would be Mark winning or Raul winning. All right. So for game one. Mark or rule a rule is going to win this. And depending on what happens, we're going to branch off to two more games. So let's. Branch off again. So then this one is going to be game two. I'll just put G2. All right. And again, we're going to have Mark and Raul. Mark and Raul. And then for the third game, So uh, then this is G th game three. I'll put up here. And so that's going to be Mark 
row mark row and i'm keeping them in the same order just so it's a little bit less confusing to kind of digest so this is going to be mark 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 raul mark raul mark mark raul raul and then this is raul mark mark Raul and then this is R Raul Raul Mark and lastly Raul wins all three of them. So again we've got two times two times two is equal to eight outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight outcomes. That's the denominator. Sure, for you put RRM for the last one. Oh, thanks. I should be. I said RRR, but I wrote RRM, huh? All right, so there's eight outcomes, so that's going to be the denominator for each one of these. So on this one, eight is going to be the denominator, which we found by the counting principle. We're just counting all of the outcomes that we got our tree. <coughs> but the, the reason why I did the two by two by two is just so you can see how we find the number of outcomes total if we didn't have this. And that's going to play a part in the 10.5. All right. So now what we want to find and what we want to count for the numerator is either Mark or Raul win all three games. So here's all three games. Here's Raul winning all three games. And all the rest are mixed. They're uh, two for one and one for the other. They're just mixed up. So then this is two eights. So one fourth. All right, questions? No, so far, so good. So eight down there. Now, let's count the ones that have Mark or, or Raul win two out of three. All right, this is not two out of three. That's three for Mark, so not that one. But that second one, there's two Marks and one Raul. So that one gets counted, right? And the second one is Mark, Mark. Well, it's Mark, Raul, Mark, but there's still two out of three. And that next one, this one is just one Mark and two Rauls. And then the next one is two Marks. This one right here is two Rauls. This one again is two Rauls. They're in different order. But all of those that are checked, and this one is not checked because that's three for Raul. All of the green ones 
or two out of three for either one of those guys. So that's six over eight. And that simplifies down to three fourths. Now, just realize you'll notice that these two things are complements of one another, A and B. Because if you add up the one quarter and the three quarters, you've got all of them. So that's going to play a part of that complement rule. All right. So if you start noticing that and realize when it's getting used, it might be helpful when we use it in 10.5. Okay, so now Mark wins only two games in a row. Only two, meaning that we can't use the one up at the top. So see that one at the top? Mark wins three but it says only two. So that one's going to stay X. So is this one two games for Mark? Yes. That one's two games for Mark. Two out of three. This one's two out of three for Raul. Here's another two out of three for Mark. And that appears to be all of them because um, this is two for Raul. So that one, that's two for Raul. This is two for Raul. And then that's three Raul's. But all three of the green ones. Doesn't it have to be in a row? What's that? Wouldn't in a row mean back to back? Oh, you know what? You like latched on to something. Here I was doing the only thing, concentrate on the only, but you know what? Yeah, you're right. Thanks for that, uh, Jordan. Uh, uh, let's back up then. So that one's two in a row. This one's two in a row. From This one is not. So that's two out of three. I was thinking two out of three, so. Sorry about that. So it's just this one and this one. This one, this one, and this one are not. So as I said on this one right here, uh, like this second one or the, the third one, that's two out of three, but it's not in a row. So thanks for that, John. So now, two over eight is one quarter. Okay. And then, uh, so one quarter, Mark wins only two in a row. And that takes out this one as well because that one is three in a row. And this one is, even though this third one is two out of three, they're not in a row. All right, so the last one says uh, Raul wins this first game, loses the second game, and wins the third game. Well, you know what? I'm going to write this out. Because that's only one thing. So it's R, M, R. So that's the one we're looking for. As a matter of fact, there's only one of them. Raul wins the first game, loses the second game, wins the third game.
So there's eight to uh, total, and then how many of them are? Oh, there, there's RMR. There's only one of those. Because that's the only one where Raul wins first, loses the second, and wins the third. So this is one over eight. Okay. Any questions? We'll do a couple more. We got still got about a half an hour to put things together. All right, anything about this that I can explain or go over again? All right, let's see what else we can get into. All right, uh, this one right here is kind of a pain in the neck to write. So, um, to draw a tree diagram for, but we're going to do it. But thankfully, after this, we don't have to worry about the tree diagrams after this section. Good. Well, that the reason why you're doing the tree diagrams is just so you can actually see and count them. So when we get to 10.5, we just do the counting using the counting methods, the proportion, the uh, pro uh, permutations, and the combinations. All right, let's see if I can find one here. I'll tell you what, this one's a nice one and it's got a lot of pieces to it. And let's see if I can bring up a picture. So we're going to have to draw one out here, so we'll just leave it there on the side. All right, so at the beginning of um, a magic trick, the great man Mancini shuffles an ordinary 52-card deck. Oh, ours looks better. Uh-oh. Now oh, how do I get back? Back here. All right. So he uh, shuffles a 52-card deck, and that's it right there, and has the nearest person in the audience draw a single card. Using the sample space for drawing a single card from this deck, find the probability that the contestant got a 10. All right. All right, so first of all, there's 52 cards in here. So the denominator is going to be 52. So how many um, tens are there? There's 
There's four tens. And that simplifies down to, and you can see it when you look at one row, that each one of the row has one 10 and each row is 13 cards. Probability and proportion are really the same things. So the club, again, there's going to be 52 for all of these. And so again, uh, let's see here. There's uh, how many clubs are there? There are. Thirteen of them. Thirteen clubs. And thirteen goes into fifty-four two four times. And you can see by the circled or the outlined blue ones, the, the clubs, that's exactly one quarter of the deck. So that 13 over 52 simplifies down to one quarter. Okay. Let's look at this next uh, thing. An ace of hearts. Well, there's only one ace of hearts here. So that's one over 52 because there's just one out of all of the 52. One out of all of the 52. Okay. All right, a three or a five. A three or a five. Uh, so three or five. So here's the fives. And here's the threes. So it's or, so we're essentially just adding these up. So how many are those that are circle? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's eight over 52. Which is four over 26 or two thirteenths. <clears throat> and just remember with the calculators that a TI will help you simplify some of these if you have trouble with that. But uh, what happens from 10.4 on in the chapter is that they, uh, you're expected to simplify any fractions down to the uh, lowest terms. Okay. All right, so number, so letter E is a spade. All right. Or a six. A six.
So what we've got, we got 13 going across for the spades, and then we got 14, 15, 16. We will not count that six a second time because we've already counted it with the spades. So then this is four thirteenths. Okay, questions? A queen or a club? So the queens are right here. And the clubs are right there. And it's or. So 13 for the row. 14, 15, 16. It's the same thing as this one, isn't it? Am I missing something? We hit spade, then we hit six. That's the same thing. A diamond or a club? Or a diamond? Or a club. No overlap there, but that's 13 and this is 13. So then that's 26 over 52, which is one half. A red king. Let's see. We got two red kings. The heart and the diamond. So that's um, two out of 52. Which is... One over twenty six. All right, a black card or an eight. So the black card, there's uh, twenty six of those, and then the rest of the eights are there. We're also including those, but they're already counted with the black cards. So that's 26, right? 27, 28. And so let's see, 14 over 26 or 7 thirteenths. Seven thirteenths. All right, a red ten. There's only two of those, I believe. And they are right here. A red ten, and it's the same thing as the uh, red king. Because there are only two. Out of 52, which is 126. All right, so this is um, basic probability 
And then in 10.4, we're able to look at something to give us an idea of what it is we're dealing with, and we're able to count it. All right. Anybody got any questions about any one of these? All right, let's see if we can find one more to do to take up the last few minutes. There's another one that I've done. It's a kind of a pain in the neck to draw out, but we might as well give it a try. All right, so look at uh, number 15 here. Now, um, <clears throat> let's see if we can do this without having to necessarily draw. All right, so how this is a, it says a sleep number bed is a mattress that adjusts to different levels of softness. After deciding that she definitely wants one, Kimberly has a few choices to make. These choices are summarized in the table. In the table. She will need to make one choice in each category. All right. So how many mattresses, uh, unique mattresses are available here? So this is the last time we're going to have to see, we're going to be able to see things written out. But there's three sizes, two tops, and two adjustments. So this is three times two is six times two is equal to 12. All right, so I'm going to have a little bit of time getting that in here, all 12 of them. Let's see if we can do it real quick. It's okay. Thank you. And double and, and D for double. So king, queen, double. Now, off of each one of those, we're going to have two. All right. So we're going to have two here and two here. Again, see how what we get into 12, it's going to be hard to squeeze those in here. That's why it's not feasible to do this each time, but we're doing it to make a point about how these work. So pillow top, memory foam. All right, so now we got to squeeze two more in there. So that's going to be this.
All right, and I see, and then that's uh, giving us how many? That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's what we got. See, that matches that up there. So this one is uh, let's just uh, let's just call it S for sleep in manual. S M S M S All right, so we got that little sample space written out as a tree diagram. Now, we've got 12 choices, so all of our denominators are going to be 12. All right, so what's the probability of having a memory foam topped mattress? All right, so this would be king, pillow, Sleep IQ, so not that one, but this one right here, King Memory Foam here. So this one and that one both have the memory foam. So also does this one and that one and then the last one. And you might notice this pattern that exactly half of the mattresses are pillow top memory foam and half are memory foam. So see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that matches our results up here. So exactly half of them are memory foam. Oh, I'm sorry, it was pillow top, uh, memory foam, yeah. And we could also do the same thing here. Since there's three sizes, then uh, one third of them would be king, one third would be queen, one third would be double. And then the same thing on the far end with the sleep IQ in the manual. You know, half of them are going to have the sleep IQ. Say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's what those are there. See, there's patterns to all this. And that's why we don't necessarily need to look at all this. As I said, is in 10.5, we'll start dealing with things like that, but we're just going to count them using the counting methods. So we want a uh, queen mattress with a pillow top. So the queens are all of these in here. These four in here were the queens. All right. There's the queen. So these two are queens. And then these four are queens. Now, we want one with a pillow top. So queen, pillow top, sleep IQ is right there. Queen, pillow top, manual is right there. So now there are exactly two that have the pillow top and the queen. So here was the queen and off of that, hold on a second, uh, the, uh, the pillow top, I'm sorry, but, 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 there was only one of them. Yeah, there's only one queen and uh, with pillow top right there. I'm sorry, there are two, it's the next one as well. There we go, I had the wrong one checked. So this is queen pillow top sleep IQ. This is queen pillow top manual. So there are two. Over 12. So one sixth. See, and that six comes from the fact that it's um, three times two. And the denominator is the six. A memory foam top mattress with manual adjustments. Manual adjustments. 
All right. So we want a memory foam, topped mattress. So that's, so here's right here. This is memory foam here. This is memory foam and that's memory foam. And out of those, then how many are manual adjustments? Well, this one is the sleep IQ. So this is a manual adjustment memory foam. This one is a manual memory foam top one and this one is a manual memory top so that's three out of 12 so one quarter of them have a memory foam with manual adjustment All right, uh, so that's probably about it for tonight. So I wanted to just make sure, did everybody see that assignment that's out there right now that I'd asked for? Yes. The, uh, the formative evaluation, so over here in uh, – if we go into student view – As I said, you click on uh, quizzes, and then click on that, and it's just seven questions. It shouldn't take you but five minutes or so. So if you haven't done it, I appreciate it. Anybody got any final questions before we uh, take a little break? We'll come back, and we'll hit 10.4. I have a question. Um, do mm -hmm. we have do that for both class or just um just for the 120 i mean you can do it there is i think there might be one in the o two o. i don't know if i put it in there if it is you can do it in both but i just mainly want it for the 120 okay yeah because i could see it um they were on both of them so i was like okay let me make sure yeah you can if you want to okay all right thanks i'll see you next class okay <laughs> 